Um, yeah. One of the things that we talked about before the show was the parallels between yeah, religious fundamentalism and this sort of uh, you know, anti-feminist ideology in terms of the tactics they use and the way that they present things. And do you want to you know, expand a little bit, talk a bit more about what you were saying about the parallels between these two movements? Yeah, they are. They've become almost as if uh, anti-feminism has become its own religion. Because, And I understand it to a certain extent, because when I went through the transition, but I, as a child I was a, a hardcore Bible-believing Catholic, to being an atheist, uh, a devout one, dare I say, um i went i i've tried to find different uh things to replace it because you you're you're when you when you're socialized within that that framework of that you need essentially you need a um, a cause or a kind of a, some bigger thing than yourself and so i look for it in things like uh, uh politics uh music things like that trying to be a part of like a movement or whatever um and so i understand the need for that kind of uh, that bigger cause or that uh, the need to to um, to belong to a, a certain sort of in group or whatever um but what they essentially what they've done is they've set up their own kind of quasi religion within irreligiosity whereby they've got the same there's the same framework of uh you've got sort of saints dare I say like uh, christopher hitchens or whoever you know doesn't you they don't have to be dead necessarily uh, they've got the kind of religious leaders it will stoke fires underneath them, regardless of, of any of the, the really, really shoddy tactics they'll use, as we discussed earlier with Thunderfoot and his cherry picking of, um, of uh, information. And also, actually, another great one that I, I didn't occur to me earlier is his, his, um, one of his favorite fallacies is the lie by omission. Um, where uh, I don't know if you've seen the clip he uses of uh, an atheist conference, which kicks off with um, uh, they, they're discussing gender and they're saying, oh, I'm heterosexual man and my pronouns are he him her, um, and all that and they go down the line of the people on the table and he says this is what atheism has come to no that was one talk at one conference which was specifically about gender why would you expect them to not start like that and the fact that you didn't tell your audience that suggests to me that you're behaving like a fucking evangelist would and that's what these people do they'll stoke up They'll stoke up the crowd, often for their own either financial ends or uh, like a feeling of power or prestige or, uh, you know. Uh, like a Benny Hinn. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. And they are utterly shameless in doing so. They've got no problem. Whether it be, and it, part of it's anti feminism, but it does bleed into all sorts of you know, bigotry, racism, homophobia, um, Islamophobia, uh, you know, fear, uh, transphobia. Is, is, has become something of a thing as well. Um, so you get all all of that kind of um, hideousness. You get the, I mean, I jokingly refer to Thunderfoot as the Thunder Christ and his followers as the fundamentalists because they do act as fundamentalists for him. And he does almost act as a kind of quasi-religious figure within his own little realm that essentially he's, he behaves as if he is inf infallible. Uh, people, his sort of followers, treat him as if he is in infallible and that... Uh, Automatically, he says something, therefore it must be correct. And he is to be defended regardless. Even with, I had people with this thing about the um, uh, the, uh, the Crown Prosecution Service changing their guidelines to try and get more, convic uh, to try and get more uh, rape cases to court, to try and improve the incredibly pathetic statistics regarding uh, convictions for rape in Britain. Although that's a problem across the world, you know, they're trying to take a step there, uh, which didn't affect the legal rights of any human being in Britain whatsoever. It's just the guidelines for prosecution. Note the word prosecution, not, not, you know, not the law. The law hadn't changed in the slightest, but he somehow managed to twist that by, in, again, the same way that you would expect a, an evangelical fucking fundamentalist mad Christian or Muslim to do, uh, or well, any fucking religion to do, um, uh, into uh, you, you're gu you're guilty until proven innocent of rape, which isn't the case. That was never the case. It's not even close to being the fucking case. And yet, when this was pointed out to him again, he refused to accept that this was the case and just uh, obfuscated and uh, went to his fail-safe mechanism of calling someone a feminazi or so. Another thing he does this really childish thing of uh, burn or you've been pwned. Or, <laughs> Come on, like just if you're if you're prepared to have a discussion, not, and I'll uh, for full disclosure, I'll say those words too. But at least I do it in a kind of tongue-in-cheek way. Like I'm not trying to be 
cowabunga, dude. Look, you're you're a man that's pushing fucking fifty or something, mate. Just have a bit of decorum when discussing stuff. When you when you a doctor is discussing something else with another doctor, you don't say burn at the end of it, even on Twitter. Just anyone, but uh, that uh, that was an, an aside. Uh, but yeah, they've um, they've they've set up that kind of religious mindset as well. But and I, again, we were discussing this before we came on. They've now it's almost worse in a way than previously when they had God as the kind of divine thing, because even though it's all in your head anyway, um, or not that there's no God, but the talking to God or you're getting rules from God is in your own fucking head because people have put it there. Now you haven't even got that as a buffer against your own fucking ego anymore. You've given yourself the title of rationalist or skeptic or oh, I'm for logic. Just because you say that you've given yourself a title. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Just because you call yourself a skeptic does not mean that you're skeptical and certainly doesn't mean you're fucking correct. Yeah. If we go by Popper, then what distinguishes science from pseudoscience is that scientific statements have a possibility of being shown to be wrong by the evidence, and pseudoscience yeah. can't because it's either confirmation bias or cherry picking data. It is basically you will never be able to you'll never say you're wrong because you'll always be able to explain away whatever you observe. Well, that's what pseudoscience is. That's like astrology. That's, yeah, that's what I meant about having like a loop out of the thing. You can, like any fundamentalist, you argue them into a corner, and when they've got nowhere left to go, they'll say, uh, God did it, or something. Whereas they'll just go, ah, oh, you're a feminazi. It's, it's basically the same fail-safe mechanism, allowing them the ghetto. It's a little trap door they can use at any moment to get rid of any problem. Yeah. And often, often they'll just ignore it. They won't even fucking reply. They will literally just ignore the the truth. You point the truth out to them, and they'll just ignore it. And then later, pretend that you didn't point it out to them. Again, a very fundamentalist approach. But and the other thing that I had to get over was that um, German is a really complicated language. I make mistakes all the time, and I was always humiliated when I made mistakes because nobody likes to make mistakes. But Germans, actually, a lot of my German friends gave me a really good role model. They want to be corrected. They'll say to me, help correct my English, help me get better. And so making a mistake is not seen as being humiliating for them. They see it, um, well, they, if they make one, they want to know so that they can do it better in the future. And that's the approach we should have when we're presented with new data that makes us re-examine our worldview. For instance, the idea that um, there are big gender, or sorry, big um, sex differences in the brain that lead to, um, you know, that can account for the way that we have organized our societies by gender norms is wrong. And we talked about that, I think, the last time, that there is yeah. not that much difference. Well, okay, that's new data. The answer isn't to deny the data. It's to go, I need to rethink all of the things that led me from this assumption into other assumptions and then see what the new consequences are. That's yeah. called learning. That's called exactly. learning. Yeah. Well, that's what annoys me when they say, you know, um, you're only a feminist because you're not prepared, you're too dogmatic, you're not prepared to learn, or you're not prepared to take in different points of view. No, 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 no. You've got that arse backwards. I'm a feminist because I was prepared to look at the world. I was prepared to try and take in new information. I wasn't born a fucking feminist. I wasn't raised a feminist. I became one because it reflected what I saw of the world when I was prepared, when I assumed uh, Catholicism and looked at the world afresh with open, genuinely open eyes, and I saw deep fucking problems. Now, it's not perfect, and I'm constantly reassessing my situation, but basically, it's the best fit. It seems to answer a lot of the things that I see as wrong. Now, if you can prove that that's not correct, I'm prepared to change again, because I'm not, I'm not actually in a fucking religion. As the, and that's the thing that annoys me when they say, uh, oh, feminism's a religion. <laughs> No, it isn't. We don't have a god. We don't have saints. We don't have uh, dogmas. There is, and not just that, but they'll say uh, the ideology of feminism. The ideology. What? Like there's one fucking one set of rules. No, no, no. There are people called you know uh, turfs, the trans exclusionary people. I despise them as much as I despise the anti-feminists, frankly, because they're essentially two sides of the bigoted coin. I don't see them as massively different. They're they're um, they're, they're bigots. They think themselves, because they were born a certain way, they're inherently better than other people. Or uh, because they um, belong to a certain group, they're better than other people. So for me, then they're, I don't see them as massively different, even though they're feminists as well. I don't, this isn't a fucking, uh, this isn't a church. We're not following the same rules. We're not all the fucking same, okay? So shut up.
basically. <laughs> well, it's just sort of, you know, uh, turn that mirror, look at the critiques you're making and then look at the movement that you're part of and ask of the people that you listen to, are they doing, are they actually applying the scientific standards to their own, are they, uh, to their own statements when they make a conclusion about the social world? Is it backed up by evidence? Can you access that information so you can examine it for yourself? Um, yeah, I, I, I think we're kind of coming back to the same ground, but it's only because I think we both care about it so much. You know, we're saying it again. Like, yeah. please, 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 raise well, your it's, standard. I, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a point I've made before. I wouldn't be doing videos if it weren't, for the incredibly um, shitty state that, um, I, and again, it's, I, it's because it's atheism. I would expect it of um, uh, people who uh, had not had their eyes opened, as it were, uh, and purposefully or or um, via indoctrination had their eyes closed to so much of the world because of because of religion. So to have kept hold of so much of that uh, patriarchal bullshit. Even though they've come out of religion, and well, for some of them, obviously, they never were part of religion. But I think most most atheists were at one point um, sort of religious or spiritual. Or Just because there's way more religious but, people than atheists. But exactly, yeah, yeah, um, uh, and, and certainly uh, from my experience of of talking to atheists, it's, that seems the case. There are very few that came, you know, were raised as you know purely secular or whatever they all come from some sort of religious tradition um uh, but they've kept hold of so much of that patriarchal um uh, uh, bullshit and it, it's it's deeply um annoying to me because it doesn't make any fucking sense in my head that you would if you've if you've worked out it's bollocks why have you kept hold of so much of it just because you've gotten rid of the god bit that's not that's not the fight the end of it you know what i mean it's the it's the it's the system of uh control uh and it's that that doesn't even just bleed into uh, gender. That can be any number of different things. There's all sorts of hierarchy and um, uh, royalty and all kinds of privilege. Yeah, um, and indeed the the protection given to uh, pedophiles within the, the Catholic Church and all sorts of really hideous shit. Why have you kept hold of some of that? Why why not get rid of all of it and start afresh? In essence, that's that seems like the natural thing to do. And yet they, again, and it's. <laughs> It can be difficult. I, I understand that perfectly well. You know, I, I went through a, a difficult time in my transition, um, but you sort of have to. Otherwise, you you're still religious. You're just irreligiously religious, if that makes any fucking sense whatsoever. You, yes. You, you've replaced you've replaced Jesus with anti-feminism. Is what you've done there. You've replaced one. Uh, deleterious um, addiction with another, basically.